Welcome back. I haven't done much in the garage since uh, last time you saw me. I've been spending time with my family and the weather in Norway has been better than it's been in probably seven years and probably warmer than I've ever experienced. Had to take advantage of that and, um, and also spend time with the family because uh, I've been gone for two weeks now, just a month ago, going to America, preparing the bike and stuff. And now tomorrow I'm um, leaving for america again staying for another almost two weeks and i just want to say thank you to everybody who's been uh, donating supporting me watching my videos just helping out all the help i received curtis muir in, in particular for lending us the trailer and, uh, and bringing it up there and all that thank you thanks guys we're gonna pull this through this year to the have i done something wrong or designed something wrong and anxiety has been creeping up on me and um and I posted on Instagram a graph of my engine, a simulation of the engine, and people are commenting that it seems too linear and it can't be right, and there has to be a huge problem with the sim. So I'm just gonna go through. After that, I've um, I made a bunch of sims with uh, varying the length and the thickness or the girth of the exhaust, taking welding inaccuracies into account, making it a little bit longer, a little bit fatter, a little bit uh, shorter a little bit skinnier and also doing sims at various uh, temperatures in the pipe itself because that's a huge variable and we don't know the pipe wall temperatures and uh, i'm going to bring that up now and show you like the span of where the engine can be peaking where power can be and all the simulations have been run at bonneville conditions so power is uh, simulated power is lower than uh, what you'd expect at sea level or at my place this is all done in Engmod 2T. Great software, check it out. There's links in the description and also links to videos by Fanik himself explaining much better than what I do. So here's a span of uh, simulation results for varying temperatures and lengths and thicknesses of the exhaust pipe. And you can uh, can see it's a fairly huge span and that's mostly from the temperature differences you can see how the engine can peak between about 19 and a half thousand rpm and uh, down to 16 and a half and it's probably somewhere in between probably i think around 17 and a half thousand rpm and uh, what people were concerned about is how it seems like it just takes off at around 10,000 rpm and then just keeps on going until peak and then quickly drops off and uh, well it does take off but there's at 13,000 there's still under half the power you have at did I stop recording now no it's still recording the screen turned off I thought I said it to never turn off and you can actually see a little dip there in most of the simulated results. The simulation doesn't, even though I've put in a rich condition around 10,000 RPM, the simulation can't, well, you can't put in numbers to make it super rich and a carb acting weirdly around where the pipe is working against you. But uh, it's not the case here. So there's probably much more of a dip before around 13, 14,000 RPM than what you see here. But uh, so this is the range we're working with. And now let's go through the model together and, um, and see if we can find a huge flaw somewhere. Let's start with the engine itself. Naturally aspirated crankcase compression, crankcase scavenge engine. Yep, it is. Conventional parallel piston and bore. Yep. Performance, air water cooled. Yep. Roller bearings. 1.24 case compression ratio. That's correct. 255 cc crankcase volume. That's correct from my CAD model and should be very close in real life. Transfer volume included in ratio, yep. One cylinder, 40 millimeter bore, 39.3 millimeter stroke, 90 millimeter conrod, no offset of the wrist pin, 14.5 compression ratio. We've got 16.5 heads too, but 14.5 are installed at the moment. Uh, 0.5 millimeter squish clearance, 50% squish area, correct. 101 millimeters dome radius of the piston. There's a two millimeter difference between the edge and the middle, so that's correct. Zero in deck height, yep. 
Max power RPM, 17,000 RPM. That's what I've been running some of the sims at. So, um, and one in throttle opening, so wide open. So that's correct. And there's uh, the pressure transducer, pressure transducer positions are all at zero, what I want them to be in this case. Uh, exhaust port. So here's the dimensions. Let's pull it up here and see. It looks right. The open duration is right, 202. It's actually 108, but then there's a big bevel. So that's a guesstimate of, uh, of what, uh, what it seems like it is. So that's right, correct for what I wanted. 192 open duration of the auxiliary ports. Seems right. The height checks out. Effective port diameter, 25.3. That seems right, and is right, but uh, there's no no huge flaw there. Same with the combined area of the auxiliary ports and also for the main port. With correct, and yeah, everything seems correct there. So nothing, no huge flaws there. Uh, transfer ports. 2A ports, 2B ports, 1C port. They're all close at bottom dead center. 115, 114. Timing seems correct. The roof angles are correct. 25, 10, and 60. Lengths, not, nothing wrong there. Uh, area ratio between uh, in entrance and exit seems right. And we can pull up the display them. The windows doesn't look wrong, and the durations are right. 130 for the A ports to make them a little bit further from the the, the floors of the auxiliary ports. 132 for the B and C ports. Correct areas look correct. Nothing obscene or hugely wrong there. Inlet ports. Disc valve opening at 145, closing at 88. That might be closer to 85, but uh, and plus minus a degree or two, both in opening and closing. But that's correct. Flow width at top 40, 26 at the bottom, height 27. Nothing obscene here, and we can have a look at it. And yeah, that looks pretty much like what we see in in the engine itself. Okay, so there's no huge flaw there. Exhaust here, there's, uh, there's some controversy here, I would uh, think, or people will see something weird here. And uh, first of all, it looks like a normal pipe. But you might notice the, the header looks overly fat, and it is. So this is actually kind of an experimental thing, but, it, but really not. And also you can see how the, the percentage of header uh, from uh, piston to beginning of the um, divergent cone is just 23 percent that's not the case the thing is the header is uh, diverging a lot and also so fat that uh, uh, the software thinks i'm the thinks the header ends here and then this is part of the diffuser but actually this is the header and i've run so many sims now trying to make that header more normal but this seems better um, I'm not sure why, maybe because the pipe is so short, maybe because the, we want to spend some energy at the beginning to make the pulses not as strong, to avoid shock waves. Something makes a really fat header, a fatter header and more steep header than what you normally see better, it seems. And I'm trusting the software in this. It's not obscene, it's a few degrees more. And so I'm just trusting the, the software here. This could be the huge flaw. And if it is, if in real life we just can't get good numbers, we always have the old pipe from the old engine with similar port timings and uh, that should also work. And that's tuned for lower RPM and it's skinnier and more, more conventional. So this is the only unconventional thing, but it's not really that unconventional. So everything checks out in the exhaust. Uh, inlet type. So that's the carb display and the carb looks there's normal now with a 28 millimeter carb we have a 32 if we want to use that combustion data time so i'm running the turbulent model so everything here it doesn't really matter 
Uh, the only thing that matters is the timing, and the timing checks out to normal timing numbers, 15 degrees at peak power-ish. And AFR, you can see how I've reached the data at uh, 10,000 RPM, but uh, otherwise it's, it's sitting at about peak power lambda values, AFR values. Uh, exit. And uh, temperatures. I've run a bunch of different temperatures for the exhaust walls and also just a fixed temperature and also a variant temperature. Just that, that was in the span you saw together with, uh, with uh, pipes being, uh, being scaled up and down and also lengthened and shortened. So but there's nothing, nothing weird here. You can see how I'm running 40 degrees Celsius as inlet temp and also low pressure for a 1500 meters uh, of altitude. So there's nothing, nothing obscene here, nothing obscene here. The pipe is a little weird, but not that weird. And we have the old pipe if it's too weird. Let me quickly show you a simulation. You can see how I've already done that because my camera cut out. But uh, I'm going to just show you what, uh, what happens in the simulation and what you can uh, read out of it. So this will be a simulation showing the exhaust traces and also cylinder pressure traces. So exhaust pressure traces, cylinder pressure traces, and inlet pressure traces. Continue. The green one is the exhaust uh, pressure trace. And uh, what you really want to pay attention to here is how high you get the first peak here and where this low pressure peak is uh, positioned. You want that pulling hard, so lowest at around bottom dead center. And, uh, and then you want the high, the second pressure peak in the exhaust. You want that close to exhaust port closing, as close as possible, and of course as high as possible. And you also want to see how the, you can, you, you want this, the start of the first, the high pressure pulse here, you want that to start higher than at one. And that means there's super positioning, where there's a residual pulse, the pulse that hits the piston when it's closing that kind of strengthens the, the current pulse. Uh, you want the exhaust, I told you you want the exhaust pulse close to where the exhaust port closes, because then you get, then that happens, like you have some residual pressure that gets added to the next cycle. And also you want the pressure in the cylinder to be highest before the exhaust port closes. You want that to happen before, otherwise you're kind of wasting uh, exhaust power. So that's, I, I've made an earlier video, but I think you want to, um, there's links to Vanik, Niels Vanik's, uh, Niels Van Niekirk's videos, he's the creator of the software, there's uh, videos, links to videos of him explaining, he does a much better job than me, of course, because he made the software. Uh, so here you can see the result from just a 17 to 18,000 RPM uh, pull with 200 RPM increments. And so this doesn't show much, it's just a window, but you saw the other curves. Exit. Okay, so this was just uh, mostly to calm myself down, hopefully calm some other people down that being concerned about how this won't work. And so um, there's no, no huge flow here. The exhaust pipe might be too unconventional, but then we have the old one. I think we're good. Okay, thanks for watching. Thank you for supporting me. Uh, without you, this wouldn't be possible. So thank you. And uh, we're going to pull through this year too. And hopefully set a record. See you. See you on the salt.